Okay guys, um, we're starting the second part of module one. This is gonna be on water. Um, we're gonna do macromolecules. We're gonna talk about enzymes a little bit. In this video, I'm just gonna do water though. I think that's, that's enough for you guys to uh, chew on for a bit. So like I said guys, this video is gonna be all about water. Um, I'm gonna take your swimming pools, your solar covers, all that into account. Um, we're talk gonna talk about why if you're looking at a glass of water, you can see a little curve uh, on top of the water. But just to start off, if we have a swimming pool, okay, there's your swimming pool, water in there, okay? If you were to jump in the water, okay, you're jumping in, I guess I should put a diving board in there, okay? We don't want you jumping off a house or anything, but you jump in the water, all right, your friends say, hey, dive in, dive in, you're like, oh, it's only four feet of water, probably not the best thing. Um, so you either do a cannonball or my favorite, you do a nice big belly flop into the water. Um, you are going to hit off of the top of that water and it's probably going to hurt. Why it's gonna hurt is because you're breaking some of the bonds in water. Now, water, we always talk about water being a polar molecule. Okay? So here's a water molecule. We have our hydrogens up here. We have our oxygen down there. Uh, let me draw a couple of them here. Hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, Put one more. Okay, so there's our water molecules. Now, hydrogen naturally is a gas. Oxygen naturally is a gas. Put them together and most of the time it's state, depending on temperature of course, but most of the time it's a liquid. Makes a lot of sense, right? But nevertheless, this is its natural state. Now, if we were to break apart this bond here, this hydrogen's gonna go away, this oxygen's gonna go away. Well. I should say both of those bonds. Um, if we get the two gases out of there, the hydrogen gas, the oxygen gas, that's, that's not really what we want. We want to keep it water. So these bonds are going to be extremely, extremely strong. So what we call those bonds are covalent bonds. Okay. Now, I just said at the beginning of the video, we call water a polar molecule. So these bonds are called polar covalent bonds. And again, they are strong bonds, okay? So in one water molecule, the hydrogen and the oxygen are held together by polar covalent bonds. But there's other bonds at play here. The hydrogens are slightly positive in charge and the oxygen is slightly negative, okay? So you guys know, just like a magnet, we have North Pole, we have South Pole, put North and North together, they repel. Put south and south together and they repel but if you put north and south together they attract so for this we want to make sure we're always pairing our opposites together so i'm going to pair the oxygen with the hydrogen okay now these are bonds that are just held holding the two water molecules together and there's going to be one here too okay and it'll go on if there's another one down here but these bonds are easily breakable. Now, all that does is separate the water molecules. It does not tear apart an individual water molecule. So we call these hydrogen bonds, okay? They're very, very weak. You jump in a pool, you do your belly flop there. You are breaking those hydrogen bonds, okay? But once you're under the water, those bonds reform. Once you come up and your head pokes out of the water again, guess what, you broke those bonds again. So like I said, they're very, very weak. Breaking a few of them, not a big deal. With as much surface area as you have, if you do a belly flop and you you know, smack on the water, that's gonna hurt because you're breaking a whole heck of a lot of hydrogen bonds, okay? Now, at the surface of water, right here, okay, those hydrogen bonds create something called a surface tension. Okay. So that surface tension is created through the hydrogen bonds. And that surface tension is also created by a property of water, our first property called cohesion. So what cohesion is, is it is water molecules attracted or having an attraction to other water molecules. So in other words, guys, it's water 
bonding to water. So it's water to water, okay? So again, that's created by our surface tension there. But also in this pool, we're gonna have other properties at play. Um, the first one is along with the water molecules being attracted to each other and forming that surface tension on top, those water molecules are also gonna be butted up against the pool, the liner of the pool. We call that property adhesion. So that's water. That's water's attraction to other things that are not water. Now, water is not attracted to everything in the world. Okay, if you were to put water in a glass and then put oil in it, well, that water and that oil, they're going to separate from one another, all right? So since we say that water is a polar molecule and it's held together by polar covalent bonds, we say that oil or things that separate from water are gonna be the opposite of polar, which is non-polar. Um, given that, what type of bonds do you think hold non-polar molecules together? Makes sense that they would be not polar covalent bonds, but non-polar covalent bonds, all right? So that's adhesion. Um, if you have ever looked at a glass, okay, or a graduated cylinder, they're a lot skinnier, so it's much easier to see it here. But if you were to fill it up with water to a certain amount, you would see that the water is actually slightly curved on the top. And we call that the meniscus. So what that is, is this water molecules not only clinging to other water molecules here, but they're also clinging to the side where they're able to almost like use each other as a ladder and hoist themselves up there before gravity takes them back down. So um, with something like a graduated cylinder where we have a, a fairly good amount of room, it's gonna go up a little bit on the sides. But if we have a smaller tube, like those um, inside the stems of trees and, and plants, the water is actually able to climb up there. That's why when you put a paper towel in water, guys, it will just continue to climb up the paper towel um, without you really doing anything to it. But the water will just keep climbing up. We call that ha uh, capillary action. So that is water traveling against gravity. So water traveling against gravity, that's capillary action. Now, for capillary action, guys, it is going to be a combination of both of our other properties of cohesion and adhesion, okay? Because the water is clinging together, the water is clinging to the water, but it's also clinging to the sides of the uh, tubes inside the plants, which are called xylem. So it clings to the inside, or the outside, and then the water boosts itself up off of other water molecules, all right? So those are our three properties of water. Um, we already talked about water, it, it does, it, it's able to combine with a lot of things. That's why they say water is the universal solvent, all right? Um, last property of water, guys. So let's say, let me erase this a little bit. Get rid of our surface tension. So you're not in the pool right now. Never wanna be in the pool when you have a solar cover on. So here's your solar cover. This is something that is going to, uh, if you've never seen one, rest on top of the water, and it's going to essentially uh, attract the heat of the sun, and when the sun beats down, the solar cover is able to transfer that energy to the water, right? Problem is, if you ever gotten to a pool right after you take the solar cover off, the top is very warm, okay? Up here is very warm, but then if you go right past that top layer, you know, it's still like ice down here. It's very cold, right? Um, so the last property of water, guys, is a high specific heat. What that means is that water, or the temperature of water, so water's temperature needs a lot of energy to change. Water's temperature needs a lot of energy to change. So we want the temperature of water to be pretty much consistent, right? 
sure, you want to get in the pool and you're like, oh, I would like it to be like bath water so I can go play and I don't have to like, you know, try to hurry up and jump in and, and you know, kind of acclimate to it. But this is good for us. Reason being is your body temperature is 98.6 degrees. Say your body temperature is able to go up quickly or down quickly. Well, you're, you're, you're gonna be dead. We don't want that, right? So if your body temperature were to go up to 107 degrees, you're dead, or at least at the very least, you have very, very bad heat stroke. If your body temperature goes down to the 80s, you're probably dead, all right? We don't want that. So with that, we want our water to have a high specific heat because if you were outside in the winter time when it's like you know below 20 with the wind chill, okay, if the water inside your body, because we're made up of about 70% water, if that were to go down and your internal temperature matches the external temperature or the temperature outside, you're dead, all right? So we want to make sure that the water is very resistant to change, all right? Um, especially with temperature. So, all right guys, hopefully this helped. Um, next video, we will go over the macromolecules and then the video after that, we'll do enzymes and that'll be the end of the second part of module one. Take care, guys.